Hey boys and girls, this is Mrs. Olson, and today we are going to talk a little bit about research. Research is when we are hunting for the answers to our questions, and I'm going to show you a way that we can write down the things that we know and the things that we learn. And our theme today is going to be about goldfish because that's what our story is about later. Okay, let's jump in. Do you see these letters? What is this letter? K, and K is the beginning of the word no. What is this letter? W, W is the first letter of the word wonder. And then what is this letter? L, and that is the first letter of the word learn. When we're writing down the things that we research or that we're finding answers to, we're going to think about what we already know, then we're going to wonder about our questions, and finally, we're going to think about what we have learned. That's K W L. Know, wonder, learn. Good job. All right, we're going to use the K W L strategy with Mrs. Olson today so I can remember and learn more about goldfish. Now it has been a while, but because I once had a pet goldfish, I already know some things just from observing or watching the goldfish in its habitat. For example, I already know that goldfish are animals that live in water. I know that a goldfish has eyes and a mouth. I know that a goldfish has fins and a tail to help it move. I know all of these things because I could watch the fish swimming in its tank and I saw its body parts. If I was taking notes on a KWL chart, it would look like this. There are three columns. These are columns that go up and down. And then there's three headings to tell what kinds of information goes in the column. The first column is the K. Do you remember what the K stood for? No, that's right. Here's what I already know. The middle column stands for the W. Here's what I wonder about. And then the last column is the L, and it stands for here's what I have learned. All right, let's think back to the things that I said that I already know about fish, and I'm going to write some of them down in the first column. I wrote down fish live in water, fish have eyes and a mouth, Fish have fins and a tail to swim. Those are things that I already know. I don't have to do research about them because I know those things from my experience with goldfish. But I do need some things in my wonder column. Hmm, what do I wonder about goldfish? Well, I've always wondered, do fish ever close their eyes? I've also wondered, do fish have teeth? How do they eat their food without getting choked? Well, those are things that I can write down in the middle column where it says, here's what I wonder about. Do fish ever close their eyes? Do fish have teeth? That's what I wonder. So that's where my questions go. Now I've got to do some research and learn about the answers to my questions. To do that, I'm going to a resource. A resource is something that we can trust to have true facts so we can learn from it. I went to a thing called Epic Online where it has lots and lots of nonfiction resources. And I found a book about goldfish. It's called Guess What? Flashy Friends pets and in this series there's all kinds of books about different pets and you guessed it this one is about goldfish it was written by a lady named felicia macheski it was published by cherry lake publishing 
in 2018. As I read through it, I was happy to see that the things that I thought I already knew about fish were correct. Fish do have eyes and a mouth. Fish do have tails and a fin. And I even learned some more things about fish that I didn't even realize I was curious about. But I needed the answers to my questions. So I read this page that says more facts about goldfish. Number one said goldfish can live about 30 years. Hmm. Well, that's interesting, but it doesn't answer one of my wonder questions. So I went on to number two, and I got a little lucky there. It says, goldfish have teeth in their throat that help them eat. Wow, that answers one of my wonder questions. Down here it says, as I continued reading, I learned that goldfish do have teeth, but... They are in the fish's throat, way back here, instead of in the front of its mouth, like a human having teeth. So, now I need to know my second answer to my wonder question. Um, let's see, number three says goldfish have a good sense of smell. Hmm, that's interesting, but it doesn't answer one of my wonder questions. So let me keep reading. Number four. Goldfish do not have eyelids. Wow. I also learned that goldfish can't close their eyes because they don't have any eyelids. No wonder they always swim around with their eyes open, huh? Well, now that I have the answers to my wonder questions, I'm going to go back to my chart. In the wonder column, my first question was, do fish ever close their eyes? What did we find out? Nope, they sure don't. So over here I have to write no. They don't even have eyelids. My second question was, do fish have teeth? What did we find out? Yes, their teeth are in their throats. So they do have them. They're just in a place that you wouldn't expect. Well, I had two wonder questions. And when I told what I've learned, I had two answers. Good job, me. There are lots of ways of sharing information with others. When we research, sometimes we're going to share. Sometimes that may mean writing a report. When you get to third or fourth grade, we do that a lot. Sometimes it may mean drawing a picture or making a poster to show what you've learned. Sometimes you may make a recording. You may make a video or you may record your voice to share what you've learned. And there's other ways to share what we've learned too. But those are some of the main ways that you'll share information in elementary school. All right, guys, we are going to head over and read a book today about goldfish. So come on, let's go. Wow, look at this big map. Mrs. Olson is showing you this map today because we are down here in the state of Arkansas, but our story today takes place in New York City. So if you were looking at a map, New York is this state that's pink. It's kind of shaped like a triangle. It has this extra little island part. And Arkansas is down over here, and our shape is kind of unique. It's not really a triangle, not really a square. It is just Arkansas. The story that we're going to read today is a fiction book. That means it's make-believe, but it's based on true facts. A lot of times an author will learn about something, and then she'll make up a story, or he'll make up a story about kids that did something during that time when an adventure was going on. And that's what happens today. So, to give you a little background about the story, we're going to pretend that we are going to New York City. Ta-da! Here we are. This is a picture of New York City. 
we're going to pretend we are in Riverview Park. Can you walk along the Hudson River with Miss Olson? Look at all these paths that we can walk on. In Riverview Park, there are many walking paths and bicycle paths, but the story that we're going to read today takes place at a special part of the park, right here. What do you think about this beautiful fountain? The name of the fountain is Hamilton Fountain. See the big, beautiful stone eagle at the top? Yeah, when the fountain is turned on, water comes out of the dolphin's mouth and spills into this bowl. And when the bowl is filled up, it spills out into this little pool. This is an old, old fountain. And when it was built, it had two purposes. One was just to be beautiful and to decorate the park, but it also had a useful purpose. It was to give water to the horses. Way back when this fountain was built, people didn't drive cars. They still rode horses and pulled wagons with the horses to get around from place to place. But today's story is about a man who did something really, really fun with the fountain. Are you ready to find out? All right, here we go. The name of our, fit, of our book is Goldfish on Vacation. This is our make-believe book about a true place, that New York City fountain. The book was written by a lady named Sally Lloyd-Jones, and the pictures were drawn by a man named Leo Espinosa. Schwartz Wade Books Company published the book, and the copyright date is 2018. All right, let's begin. Sometimes it is hard being a goldfish. You dream of growing fat and exploring coral reefs, but instead, here you are in a bowl going round and round in circles. <sighs> and sometimes it is hard being a child in the summer, in the city, and all your friends leave. <sighs> and there's no one to play with. And you dream of escaping the steamy heat too. But instead, here you are in an apartment, going round and round in circles. Ho oh, hum. But sometimes, well, something happens to change all that. And that's what this story is all about. Goldfish on Vacation. In a small apartment, in a tall round building, by a park, next to a river, in the middle of the big city, there lived three children, H, little O, and baby M. In a small bowl, next to a lamp, in the middle of a table, beside the curtains, in the small apartment, there lived three goldfish, Barracuda, Patch, and Fis, and I'm not sure which one is which. An old fountain stood at the end of their street. It was broken and covered with ivy. Miss Olson find the right place again. I went too far, didn't I? Here we go. It was broken and covered with ivy. No one used it anymore, except to throw garbage in it. But the children thought it was beautiful. On the top of the fountain, there perched a beautiful, magnificent stone eagle with outstretched wings. The eagle looked as if it had just landed or was just about to fly off. Well, Grandpa said, the same people who built the famous Grand Central Station also built that fountain. 
And in the olden days before cars, Grandpa said horses drank from it. But when people got cars, they didn't need horses or the fountain, and they stopped taking good care of it. The children felt sad, sad for the fountain and for the eagle. Then one day, early in the summer, a sign appeared. Let's see what the sign says. Hamilton Fountain Water Garden. Coming in two weeks. Calling all goldfish looking for a summer home. Huh. I don't know if I'd want to put my goldfish in that fountain. There's no water in it, just trash. Hmm. The children rushed home to tell their fish, You're going on vacation. Barracuda stared with his big fish eyes. This blew big fliss bubbles, and Patch sank slowly to the bottom of the bowl as if he couldn't believe his ears. See, H said, they can't wait. Grandpa rushed into the kitchen, and on the big calendar on the wall, next to June 28th, he wrote, Goldfish on Vacation. But the children didn't need a calendar to remember. They were already counting the days. Every morning they rushed to the window, and so did Grandpa. And every morning they watched a man working at the fountain. Oh, look at all this trash, guys. Newspapers and cans and bottles. There's an old broken umbrella that somebody threw in the fountain. Hmm, he's got his work cut out for him. One morning he was cleaning. The next morning he was scrubbing and scraping. And then another morning he pulled Ivy off the eagle and filled the fountain with clear, cold water. He put in tall reeds and then lily pads. And then one morning, the children couldn't see him. They couldn't see him because, whoa, because of all the children. The children and more children and more children were crowding around him. All of them were waiting to drop off their little fish children. Wow, look at all of those kids. And they've all got fish bowls. Look at all of those goldfish that are ready to go on vacation. And there's the eagle to watch over them. All right. I don't know if all those fish bowls are going to fit. Let's see what happens, guys. It's today, cheered H and little O and little baby M. And it was. In no time, they were making their way slowly down the big staircase and out the front door, Grandpa leading the way, then little O with her net, and then baby M with the fish food, and then H with the bowl, and Barracuda and Patch and Fiss. It was a wonderful goldfish parade. Out on the street, everywhere they looked, there were goldfish parents, just like them, with their goldfish. Look at all these goldfish. Wow. When at last it was their turn at the fountain, H and baby M and little O told their fish goodbye. And they told them, see you soon. And don't be homesick. Then the man helped them lower the bowl underwater. 
At first the fish hung back in the bowl, until, bloop, in a flash of light, they darted out and were gone. Look at all of them playing together. They're going to have so much fun. The water shone in the shadow of the eagle's wings, and the children saw, glistening in the sunlight, swimming in the clear, cool pool like sudden glimpses of hidden treasure, fish after golden fish. Oh, look how much fun they're having. All through the hot summer, H and little O and baby M stopped by to say hello to their goldfish, and so did the other goldfish parents. Soon all the children looked forward to meeting each other at the fountain. Every day they played together, and every day Grandpa came and put his chair down and chatted with the children who sat and listened and he told them good stories of those hot August days long ago when he was a boy, and how all the children who couldn't leave the city for summer break would jump and splash in the fountain. And then those children wished that, well, they wished they were those children that got to jump in and splash in the fountain, of course. Before they knew it, it was the end of summer. And the man told the goldfish parents that the only way to catch their fish was to get in the fountain. Yeah, they got to wade into the water with their nets. And so all the children took off their sandals and jumped and splashed and laughed in the fountain. Look at them catching their goldfish friends. It's time to go home, guys. And then Grandpa took off his sandals, too, and rolled up his trousers and paddled. He said it was like those days long ago when he was a boy. I wonder if paddled means like dog paddled. That must be what they mean. And the children could hardly even recognize their goldfish. They looked like completely different fish. Are these really our fish? asked little O as they headed home. Oh, yes, I'm absolutely certain they're our fish, said Grandpa, who really wasn't at all certain they were, but it was okay. They look so fat and happy, said H. Well, of course they do, said Grandpa. That's what a vacation will do for you. And anyway, who says you have to leave the city to have a vacation? And the children laughed because they knew it was true. And so, the goldfish, who may have been Barracuda and Patch and Fizz, or maybe some other goldfish altogether, well, anyway, whoever they were, they went back to being fish in a bowl. And the children went back to being children in school until the next summer when the Hamilton Fountain would once again be filled with lily pads and reeds and shining clear water and beautiful golden fish. Oh, and children. Many, many children. The and oh there's the man he's cleaning out the fountain again and there's h carrying his goldfish home wasn't that a good story maybe someday you and i will have a chance to go to new york city and see that fountain i wonder if it will be in the summertime and it will be filled with goldfish hmm well I have something for you to do in Pebble Go today. If you are a second grader, you are going to work on this. So kindergartners and first graders, you can just listen for a sec. Exit ticket four, and there's a place for your name. You're going to make a KWL chart for me about a turtle. Yeah. 
So you're going to make three notes about a turtle. In this column, just like Miss Olson did with the goldfish, you're going to tell me something I already know about a turtle. And you're going to make a text box and type it right here. Okay? What do you already know about turtles? Just one thing. If you can think of more, you can tell me more, though. In the middle column, that's where you're going to tell me your question. Here's what I wonder about turtles. So you're going to type me something right here that tells me what you've been wondering about turtles. You might have to think about it for a little bit, and that's okay. And then we know that the third column says, here's what I have learned. So you're going to have to go somewhere to do some research about turtles. So Miss Olson found a Pebble Go article at this link that tells about turtles. So if you go to this link and click it, it's going to take you to the information about turtles. You might have to have a username. You might have to have a password, but those are right up here, okay? The username is W-R-C-E-S. That stands for Woodrow Cummins Elementary School. And the password is research. After you click this and put in the username and password if you need to, you're going to use Pebble Go to listen to information about turtles. See if you can find the answer to your wonder question. And if you can, type it right here and tell me the answer. If you can't find the answer, just tell me something cool that you learned. Okay? All right. Now, everybody else, kindergarten and first grade, and second grade, if you want to do this part, you can too. I've made some word puzzles for you today. The instructions say, well, put your name up here, of course, and then draw lines to show which two words can work together to make a new word. So here's your examples down here. It says examples. If you take gold and fish, that makes a new word. Goldfish. So I drew a line from this dot to this dot to show gold plus fish makes a new word, goldfish. And then I did the same thing here. Lip plus stick makes a new word from dot to dot, lipstick. I've made some for you over here. There's your puzzles and there's your answers. So you're going to figure out what basket and ball makes and draw a line. You're going to figure out what new word snow and man makes. Find the answer over here on this side. Draw the lines to connect. All right. I hope you have fun doing that today. And I will see you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.